What is good? We're back. The NFL draft is concluded. We're going to get into some running backs now. You know, some good landing spots, a lot of questionable landing spots. What are you guys thinking? Jay Wayne, how you doing? You have hate in your heart lit at that. I love running backs. Let's talk about them. Let's do it. I thought we were going to discuss what the best seltzer was. But. Oh, that we could go hours on that one. Yeah. I wasn't prepared for running back talks, so I'm always ready to talk running backs. We got full tripod. We got our guy Matt Foreman over here. How you doing, Matt? Doing well, doing well, doing well. Ready to jump into these running backs again. Not sure how much really has changed for me going through these. Maybe a, a couple of people jumped up and a couple of people jumped down. Uh, but that's what we're going to get to the bottom. We're going to kind of do some tier jumping and, and just probably go through draft uh, capital or draft pick wise um, and see kind of see what we think here. So let's do it. Let's get into it. All right. So Brees Hall, first running back off the board. No surprise there. People said he could have been a first rounder um, in some I draft. like you. He said in an interview that the, uh, the Jets told him they were trying to trade back into the first for a fourth pick to get him. Yeah. I think the Jets did a great job. They were they were they were doing best player available strategy in a in a rookie draft, and uh, so they were you know I really like it like like what the Jets did, and then they came back and they're like, hey, we took Michael Carter in the fourth round. He was pretty good. We're just gonna go ahead and take Brees Carter and blow this thing out of the water. Now we got Garrett, we got uh, Elijah, we still got Corey Davis for a year. We've brought in a bunch of different tight ends that you know could be pretty decent, and uh, we, we've bolstered this offensive line. Hopefully, Mackay Beck can, can get back to his previous form. Um, and then it's going to really be on, hey, we're setting Zach Wilson up for uh, either failure and see that, hey, we got to move on or to succeed. Yeah, they're, they're doing the old Jalen Hurts, what the Eagles are trying to do with Jalen right. Hurts. Right, and Tua and, and so forth. So we're in a draft right now. We took Brees Hall 1-1. Um, has anybody not taken Brees Hall? I guess we'll do first running back one and then second 1-1 one, overall. overall. Yeah, I think he's probably the 101 right now and and so then the running back one obviously yeah i don't i don't i can't see any way that you're taking walker over him the eyes have it right uh, so you know Brees to the jets maybe not quite the sexiest landing spot you Ugh. were looking for i i think it i think i like it more than buffalo uh for me personally um i just don't like the way that the jet or that the that the bills use the running back now we'll get to the running back that got drafted to the bills yeah um and makes a lot more sense for me sure agree. Um, totally agree so but the breeze can't do everything that james cook does sure but uh it would have had to it would have had to symbolize a change of the of the guard and of the organization right. of the mentality and you just didn't see that happening which is why you didn't think the Bills were a good landing spot for right. Brees Hall. So, you know, there is an okay offensive line in, in New York. There's okay weapons in New York to, to alleviate some stacked potential boxes uh, for Brees. Brees can kind of do it all. But there is a little Michael Carter in there, fourth-round pick. And I could I don't really give a shit about the capital of Michael Carter anymore at this point. I know he can play. The Jets know he can play. But you have this right. guy here who was the potential guy in this draft that had probably the closest thing to a potential elite Correct player yeah. in the draft. This reminds me of when the Rams had um, Henderson, Henderson, and then they took Acres in the in the second round. I think I think that's fair. I think you're going to see a more heavy split with these two, though. Would you do you think that's like a more of like a seventy thirty? Where I feel like at times it was close to fifty fifty with yeah, those two guys. Yeah, no, I think that Hall is definitely done more than Acres has been. Well. It's hard to say because of his injury. So the Michael Carter value has taken a dip for sure, and it might might Good move time. might move some people off Brees a little bit if you still believe in Carter somewhat. And I hitting think, the Jets, that's sure. also a way. And Zach Wilson, Those I think are there's ways to get off of of, of Brees, you know. And if you want sure. to take Kenneth Walker, there's certainly yeah. But you be, could say the same thing about Walker though too. Yeah. If we're gonna lump them, if we just want right. to talk about them both back to back here, I mean. Well, I think Michael Carter is – there's going to be weeks where he certainly is going to be the thorn in Brees' side from having e – either taking you to a week where you're not bummed about the stardom or a great week, like one of those two where Carter's going to take either a little bit of passing volume, maybe a touchdown here or there, yeah. um, and, and is good enough. Um, and, but how many spots in the league don't have that at this point? N none. Almost basically. none. Yeah. I mean, maybe Najee and, and like – 
Who else? That's it. J- Jonathan Taylor. There, you did see a little yeah, Naheem then, Hines yeah, for a little Naheem while, Hines, and it seemed yeah. like this this past year, maybe they put a little bit more distance between those two guys. Yeah, but he's still a thorn in his side enough in that pa- in the passing game, Certain, which I think Carter's going to do for Hall as well. Certainly I mean, could be, and I think maybe that's a good um, template for what could go on here. Maybe you see a little more Carter in year one and a little less Carter in year two, uh, kind of like Naheem Hines, Taylor, still a little bit of a thorn in the side, though. Well, the, the whole Jets coaching staff, right, the, the, the coach and the offensive coordinator, they come from a Shanahan-style type offense. And, well, obviously, Sala was a defensive coordinator, but they've got the offspring of the little floor, Shanahan, McVay, in the, in, the, in the offensive coordinator there. And they like stables. They like a stable of guys. They like fresh bodies. They like to run it a lot. At, they like to pound the fuck out of it. Now, what we haven't seen is a, is a team like that spend high draft capital on a running back. Now, Joe Douglas isn't of the McVeigh Shanahan lineage, but if you've got guys like that who like a bunch of running backs, why not get them an elite one? Exactly. You know? And yeah. so we've always said that about San Fran. It's like, which guy, you don't necessarily know which guy you wanted. You want the guy who's going to be the main dude there. And if you can get the main guy, it's a valuable piece. Now, that this offense isn't the, the Niners. It's not the Packers, it's not the right. Rams yet, right? But but we're you're buying in a little early on that. The, the Niners weren't the Niners before Shanahan came in, you know. And we were telling people you got to get all the pieces of this offense because it's a good offense. This should be a good schemed offense, and they're right. putting a bunch of talent in in all around the team. The Jets knocked it out of the park in terms of their draft, and it's. It's not a, none of the factors around Brees Hall, which I understand are concerns, are going to take me off taking him at the one one. Yeah, I could agree. Yep, agree. I I could potentially say if if I could get a little something to move back on Walker, I feel really good about the Kenneth Walker landing spot. So because they want to run the dog shit out. They want to run right? the piss out of the football. You have you do have Penny for a year. Um, One year. Pretty much never stayed healthy at this point. Yeah. Was absolutely outstanding at the back stretch of last year. Probably won some people some money in fantasy. Penny, that, that is. Yeah. Well, it was very good, very productive through the last five, six games or whatever it was. Um, and Chris Carson has a neck fusion. Yeah, they're not. They're not. I mean, he could never play again. Right. There's a real chance that exactly. Yeah. So and then what do you have? DJ Dallas right. and all the those, the like of them and right. not worried about that. So I like the Seattle landing spot a good bit, and I like Kenneth Walker as as a you know as like people like to say the best pure runner in this uh, He's deal filthy. here. He's dirty. Uh, probably like you know kind of like a Chubb argument. You yeah. Know, kind of being you know what I mean. Yeah, I could see Penny getting some some passing work more than. More than Walker does because I mean that's I mean we'll be it'll be interesting to see if they let Walker catch the ball because that's not something that he did at Michigan State or at Wake Forest right and and who you know the quarterback and what they're you know is it going to be Geno is it going to be Drew Locke is it going to be Baker in a trade yeah I don't really know uh, yeah. but either way I think it's going to be hey we're getting back to fundamentals we're going to pound the dog shit out of the football um, so I, I like Walker stepping into a pretty decent a role team here. in a weird spot here where I think Walker could be struggling for positive game scripts in year one because man, yeah. it just it just seems like Seattle's on a four defense isn't great yeah the offense and, is not that great either outside right. of DK right I mean yeah that's fair but I and the but the thing with with uh old boy uh the gum chewing maniac Pete um, Carroll, Pete Carroll I don't think he gives a fuck about the game script he'll still run the yeah. ball in a negative game script um so all right so Kenny Walker Kenny three sticks are, you know, st- staying, you know, right up there with Brees for me. Yeah, I have them both in their own tier. Okay, yeah, that's about I mean, they, the, the, I have them Hall in tier one, Walker in tier two. I think that's pretty much just about everybody at this point. You taking any of the wide receivers over Kenneth Walker? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I'm probably taking... Burks? I think I'm... Pr- I'm taking Burks... I think when you get to the the other ones, you could say that you could it could be a coin toss. I think it would depend on team need at that point. Oh, every team needs a running back. Even if you got enough running backs, you need another running back. Now, there are these constraints where you got to start three wide receivers, and for, for some reason, your wide receiver room really sucks, which shouldn't be the case. Uh, that ha- only team I feel like that was with an orphan and and one that we're trying to rebuild. Uh, but you could say the same thing of wide receivers too. You could always use another wide receiver. Mm-hmm. 
Looks like a lot of we. Yeah, got but you can always get a wide receiver. You can't trade for a running back. You can't trade for a running back. You can't and trade for a good one. What teams? What are the position really of need when teams are in season? Who are they trying? To, I'm. Who, sure. What are they looking for? What running position backs. are they looking for? Well, running back. And that's always been a philosophy of ours: is the rookie draft is a spot where we like. I'm typically going to rank running backs who I think are good and and have a a. a, a pretty high level of juice to him, which I think Kenny Walker does. I'm always going to favor those guys slightly over the receiver. I understand the mindset of the receiver, longer term, longer li shelf life, all anti those kind of anti things. Anti-fragile thoughts. Right. All, all that kind of stuff. But for me, like it's, it is like Jay Wayne just said, it's going to be the elite running back is probably the hardest thing to land. You're probably gutting your team or at least a, two major starters and some picks from your team to get that elite running back. Whereas this is probably the cheapest he's ever going to be. If he does turn into an elite guy, uh, which I mean, you can obviously say that about the wide receiver too. It's just a lot harder to pull uh, that that great. And, and I guess if he said Jamar Chase, probably pretty hard to pull off just about anybody's team. But you know, yeah. um, such I, a I, unique I, situation. And I always find this is the easiest way to restock the shelves on running back. I think you guys are a little bit higher in Walker than I am as a prospect okay. as well. I think we're probably higher on Walker than almost everyone is as a prospect, but and I'm, <laughs> no, I'm proud of that. No, I want lot, that there's shit. A lot, of, a lot of Walker love out there right now. Is there? Yeah. Because of the draft capital? Uh, I don't think the, the draft capital doesn't really do it too much for me. For It does I mean, for a lot of people, though. Not for running back. I mean, I guess it does to a certain extent for running backs, but I mean, just because, just because uh, one of the players we're going to talk about here shortly got drafted in the third round doesn't mean I'm taking over a guy that I liked on tape in the fifth or the sixth round. If I like the landing spot better and I like the tape better, I'm going to trust that process because it's it, it doesn't really matter that much to me for the running backs. Right. And, I mean, we, we talk about draft capital and we play in percentages, and I get it. And I didn't I didn't even get into some of these running backs because I kind of and, – and some of these wide receivers. I got into a lot of the wide receivers. But I've done this enough evaluation where it's like I'm going to get so far and then I'm going to let the NFL draft – kind of figure some of this out for me yeah. and and you know I, I on all the guys that got decent capital i pretty much know who they are um but i mean it's just to say that you know who's who the fantasy analysts that are you, know, you think you're smarter than a gm like i mean them boys fuck it up too like we tutu atwell was a second round pick last year there's multiple times where fucking teams just do dumb sh i mean the the look at i mean the the Niners just took Gray in the third round. I don't even know who the fuck that is. Uh, I'm really bummed. I'm really bummed. I forgot to bring up. Forgot to bring my Les Snead shirt. <laughs> it's in the mailbox. I the, hate my boy Les for like the third time here. Come on the, now. Uh, and maybe maybe Tutu turns out to be great. But, Probably not. Uh, Trey maybe Thornton they just goes trade in all the those picks round. for good players because they're not good at drafting. Thornton goes in the second round here. Like I don't think you needed. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. So, Fuck the people do fuck shit up. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not 100%, but I, I understand playing the percentage of the draft capital. With that being said, let's move on to the next guy. James Cook goes to Buffalo. Um, people were already pretty excited about this guy in certain factions. Um, and, I, and I, you know, NFL was pretty high on this guy. Good Levi's. Um, See, then that's that's what Bookie Brooks said. He said, he said, this is a NFL draft is a beauty contest. Right. And, James Cook is beautiful, I guess. To right, boys. Right, because yeah. he's got good genes. He's got Jinkos, and, and Levi's, the last names, uh, is, is Dolce and Gabbana. Is strong. Uh, so, but it lands in a spot that, I, like we said, I'll lead this off. Like, I wouldn't be crazy about Brees going to Buffalo because I'm just not sure what kind of usage. Like, he's going to get the great usage to really elevate to being as awesome as he could be. There'll be weeks where I'm sure he is, um, but James Cook seems to be a lot better of a fit for what they want to do now dayball's gone we'll see what happens but i think they've got a pretty good idea of what i don't the hell see that off move. yeah i don't see that offense changing too much right. with um uh the old miami quarterback at some point josh allen is gonna have to say hey we gotta run a little more and not me be the primary guy i'm just not sure that's gonna happen just yet yeah and i um, also think that cook plays differently than singletary and moss do where he's right. gonna be their primary pass catching running back he's he's a great pass catcher and I think you may have alluded to it at maybe when we were talking with the patrons on Friday. He he gives you a home run ability. Yes. There is some, yep. Yeah. He's got some. He's got some. some he's got there. some juice there. Right. Three which four four two is always you know it, Cook didn't even really catch all that many balls, which was is always kind of weird to me that like no, he was I mean just, he had sixteen, sixteen, and then twenty seven. He's like, projected as like, like he's the greatest wide ridiculous pass back catcher ever. But, he looks super natural and fluid when doing sure. so. And again, like we said, there's there's good Levi's, good jeans there, um, and and so. I like the fit. Sure. Uh, not a first rounder for me. Nope. Jay Wade? Can't do it. Uh, so where, where would you take him? What, is there any other running backs that you're taking over him? 
Man, let me get Spiller. <sighs> yeah. No. I want to because there's a couple guys I like later who I like the spots and I like that I think things in a couple in a year or two could be a lot less complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, that I would like their tape a lot more, but and just in your in your run of the mill PPR league, I mean Cook. I, I yes, I understand Cook didn't wasn't letting the world on fire in terms of receptions, but you could see his ability to be able to do that. Right, and I like that fit with Buffalo as well too, where yeah. they want to they want to pass the ball. Sky Moore or James Cook. Sky Moore, or I'm sorry, Alec Pierce. That was an easy one. I knew it. Oh, um, man. I guess I would probably take Cook, but I don't really love either of them. Well, let's just call you Big Cook. Jay Wayne. <laughs> well, in years past, Big Cook would take the running back for sure, but now I don't know what, what Big Cook's thinking. Uh, man, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I want to go out. I, okay. Probably, 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 probably Cook. Probably the running back. Okay. I think I, I think I lean Cook a little bit too there. Um, so I think this is going to be weird. I think this could be a weird spot with the draft where you see Hall and you see Hall and Walker go in the first, and there's gonna never be see huge, another. That's what happened. There's going to be a huge stretch of running backs where or wide receivers where. You're, I mean, you're probably not drafting another running back until the middle of the second. I mean, Walker and Hall could go top five, top six, and you're not seeing one for another ten to twelve picks, especially yeah. in one QB. Yeah. Or it's just going to be a ton of wide receivers going and maybe McBride. Yeah. So I think um, let's before we sh- we're, I'm going to kind of skip around here for a second. Cause yeah. you, you said Spiller um, and he was in a top three with those guys for me. And he kept sliding down a little with Brees and, and Kenneth and then kept kind of sliding down through the process, but still do really like uh, Spiller. Um, so he ends up going in. This has probably been the biggest change for me, whereas there's almost no chance that I'd be taking Spiller over a group of wide receivers where previously, at least especially in the beginning of this process, I would have taken Spiller yeah. over. Um, so he goes to a landing spot in the fourth round, which is, you know, I don't think that's the end of the world. Obviously, you want the third round capital percentages are better, yada, yada, yada. But he does land in an interesting spot. He lands in a in a in a spot where people could get excited about an offense. He's with Herbert. Eckler's twenty seven, super cheap on the contract. Yep, underpaid. So cheap. Underpaid. Yeah. They, I think it's one point five million dead next year. He needs to be. He needs to hold out. I think they got him at like five million dollars right. or something. They gave him the deal that Melvin Gordon wouldn't take, a lesser deal than Melvin Gordon wouldn't take, and that paid off huge for the Chargers. And he should probably hold out for more money. Like, right. Do, he's do you, got, he's, he only has another chance for a contract. Yeah. Like, well, probably yeah. one more. Yeah. Um, Twenty-seven. And and I like I like Eckler a lot, but also hasn't been the healthiest nope. of guys. I was going to say that. Um, so strong landing spot for Spiller, right? I don't. Gotta, I wouldn't say the Spiller. Str- the Spiller haters be. are going to just yeah. continue to hate, and I think the Spiller lovers are going to. It's just you can do this. I got literally up and down the board. To support my right. theory. You can yeah. do this up and down the board because it's uh, devastating to my case with anybody. So I like what you said about. Uh, you know, hey, I'm not going to let the capital after a certain point, especially running backs, really dictate things. If I like the guy and, I'm, and, my, and the landing spot's good and my, my process, I want to still take the guy maybe who was a round or two different than that guy. And I think, and this is, that's want to bring this back around because Spiller's got a round or two difference in James Cook. Um, and, you know, I was just interesting. You said you, you taking Spiller or Cook? I think I just, I think I already said, I think I got to get Spiller. You're sticking with Cook. I think I'm sticking with Cook, but I I don't. I need to find out why Spiller fell because Spiller can do everything Cook does. I, mean, I, hated, I, I hated I I hated watching Spiller run the ball. He was that's, very doesn't make any sense to me. He was very like I just wanted him to put his foot in the ground and run. Like he just felt like he was overly patient at times. And you never I mean, hear that as a complaint. Now I hear dancing in the in. in Happy feet, but I like I said, mad he, was, at he wasn't appealing. Like I said, I hated watching him. Not that it was a bad thing. It just I did I didn't enjoy watching his tape. Yeah, like my man was, had more than twenty receptions every year. Yeah, right. So and uh, leaves I, a crime scene behind while we're running. You said what? You know, I got to figure out what happened. I mean, what happened was is the combine wasn't good. Yeah, and while we were on with J Mike, uh, one of your guys at the Dynasty Dummies with, on the Fantasy Authority on Friday doing draft covers and stuff and just chit-chatting and he was basically talking about how in this draft it seemed like there was, you know, the nerds won in some of these categories whereas, yeah, hey, we're, we, are gonna, we are going to draft these more athletic guys over these other guys who were 
not quite as athletic and you know kind of panned out a little bit with Spiller but I think it, it ended in it about as well as it could after a little bit of a fall from grace yeah uh, so I think I might be still sticking Spiller there that could be to my own detriment but and, and that could that could definitely change but I think Spiller could someone's be, gonna I'm not I'm gonna miss cook someone's gonna take him before I'm ready to take him because they're gonna put him up into the first round I think I think at a point per carry league I might lean Spiller, because I think that there's not Cook's never going to be the guy. That's a silly league, right? I mean, Why are you playing points per carry? Quarter point per carry, not a full point per carry. What yeah. quarter point per carry? Yeah, I mean, it just makes things a little more interesting. It just makes the running backs even more valuable than they already are. It yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, it definitely the carries. They're already the, the ones yeah. getting the most points. You're yeah. gonna give them more points. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Fuck it. People play it. I don't. I, I don't. I don't hate it. All right. So Rashad White. We'll, we'll go back to kind of how where we were. Rashad White. Again, nerds won. Uh, good. Good combine. <laughs> the analytical nerds. Yeah. Not, uh, not this is this nerds. is J, shout out to J Mike because he this called was, them nerds this was, and I had to clarify. Kept, I didn't know if he was he talking about the dynasty nerds point. or if he was talking about nerdy people who try to figure out. Could be both. Both. Uh, Fancy. So, well, he said it was it was analytical Rashad nerds. White third round Tampa Bay. I, I I don't really hate the landing spot except for Fournette's been fucking awesome. Yeah, like he, in all he, phases. And I was looking up. He caught, he catches the ball a ton. Right. He really he got his seventy shit balls together. Yeah. Right. He so, figured it the fuck out and dominated. And yeah. by the time Tommy's out of there, like that's, I, I like Rashad Lenny White's be passing there too. chops a lot. Yeah. Um. And and you know he he's an okay runner. He's he's just that guy who you're not really sure how he keeps getting the edge, but he does somehow. It's kind of I liken him to the the forty year old fast. YMCA. Just uh, always getting his shot off. Old guy who it. just always figures out a way to get his shot off. Or, yep. And you're like he's fucking scores every time. And I think Rashad White's kind of that way. Um, got got the good capital here, yeah. Which people like to get excited about, but seems like I'm just, I just weird. The Vaughn looked pretty good at times last year. Fournette's been great. You signed him up to a couple year deal. I, I don't really understand it. I guess insurance policy. Yeah. Well, it, I don't. I mean, Vaughn did kind of come on there at the end, but he obviously he didn't show him enough to not bring back Lenny, and then they let they let. I mean, Lenny, so. Lenny was one of the best backs in the league. Like, we, there's not but too many people going to show you. I mean, but you still had to pay him a fair amount of money, which they might not have wanted to do. But, I mean, you get Tommy back, you probably need to bring Lenny back. I mean, Vaughn's okay. It took him a little while to pop off. And then Rojo's out of there. They never, for whatever reason, he could never stay out of the doghouse. And so they couldn't catch just, the ball. That was part of the right. problem. Which he is was, Rashad White is probably not going to have that problem. I think that if... I think Rashad White is immediately the RB two in Tampa. Yeah, I prefer for sure. him over Keith. Over yeah, for I think sure. So. And and you saw Vaughn get a doghouse in a couple spots here and there too. Yeah. Um. So, and then the Niners reach up at three and take Ty Davis Price. Well, well, he's his full name, Tyrion. Uh, Hand yes. of the King. Yeah. Uh. So, you know, odd odd pick for me. That I think this was another thing where the NFL liked this guy a little. You, you heard I him haven't more watched, in, I haven't in watched a single second of this. I'm guy's not going to lie and say I've seen very much. Um, but San Fran goes up, and you're you're. It's going to either be the kind of Trey. Uh, Trey Sermon kind of hype, or hey, they did the same thing with Trey Sermon and he wasn't any good. It seems like Elijah Mitchell probably took a little bit of a, a ding there with another yeah. third round running back. Um, and but they need they have a they want a stable, and he was banged up, so it makes sense they would, right. they would take has, another guy. That's an need, important position. For them. They, they don't want to pay him a guy. They don't want to pay a top dollar guy, so they're going to keep taking these middle yeah. round guys and whatever it is you walk through the door in the running backs room at San Fran you automatically have some sort of injury I think they had a bunch of force like you probably could have taken a fourth round running back and just taken somebody else there but I mean hey yeah. and, well, I just listened to an interview Spoiler. with Matt Ryan and Ryan Rosillo and he asked him what was up with uh, Matt with Shanahan and what the di- like what the differences were for him and other guys and he was like what one of his best attributes is is that he absolutely knows exactly what he's looking for to fit the exact part to the offense that he's trying to run. So sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't, but I feel like a lot of people really struggle being anywhere near consistent with that. And we've seen it a lot of times over again with Shanahan hitting that number rather more often than not hitting. There is the Joe Williams of the world and the Trey Sermon of the world where 
Maybe maybe Trey Sherman just sucks and they didn't know until you get him in. You know, you don't know if somebody sucks until they're living in your house. And then you're like, yeah. fuck, this guy sucks. We got to get him out of here. I should not have signed <laughs> a roommate contract yeah. with this guy. Yeah. Um, and, and Mitchell. Thought he was cool, but. You know, so a little bit of a ding on Mitchell. I've been kind of a pretty big proponent of selling Mitchell for the most part. Um, yeah. I think he still will be able to. I don't know. That there could be a nice little value could decrease be, where. Yeah, could be a buy window. Could be a nice little get because whoever is the starter is going to be good. And. and Mitchell didn't even catch any fucking balls last year. Like, we didn't even see, which I think there's, you know, room to have balls caught. And I think the Niners are going to run the absolute dog shit out of the football with Lance, at least for the first couple of weeks here. Well, yeah, well, I mean, what are they doing with Jimmy G? Right, well, what are they doing with Debo? And, you know, so um, we'll see what we're doing, uh, you know, as, as we proceed. But I don't know where he ranks for you guys. He, obviously, I, I don't know enough to – I'm just going to be honest. I don't know enough to say – I mean, hey, I would take him over this guy, this guy, or that guy, but he does get a good landing spot and some decent capital. I mean, he has uh, 28 career catches over three seasons, so not a big pass catcher there as well either. Maybe a little bit more of a physical style. Yeah. But, but damn, Elijah Mitchell, when he wasn't necessarily touted for that, but when he came in, he ran fucking hard as shit last year for the Niners. Um, so um, I, I don't know. I can't say. Right now, if 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 – if you got to the end of the second round and he was still around top of the third, I think I would just blindly kind of take him. I'm always, you said, you know, you always want that Niner guy who's going to be the guy. I always want the Niner guy who's the, the cheapest, cheapest that could possibly be the guy. Yeah. Uh, so and that was why I took Elijah Mitchell and was not in on Trey Sermon. Um, you circling back to Trey Sermon at all? I don't think so. Not with this. I don't think, I think this makes me a little bit, I was thinking that. Yeah. And then I'm like, hmm, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't, not if they went this high again. Although maybe maybe like you said, but I mean his dad, on. his dad, and, and what they they oh, they're good with these even fifth, sixth, seventh undrafted guys. Like yeah. I don't just don't know why you got to do it in the third. But hey, whatever. He's a top best comparable best comparable player, Wayne Gallman. I like mm-hmm. that. <laughs> Go Tigers. So Brian Robinson's the next guy. Could be a, another thorn in the side type guy. Weird pick yeah, what is, for me. What I is, thought Jarrett Patterson was good when when he needed to play. You brought back McKissick, and now you got a third guy in the in the mix here. Fourth guy. Fourth guy. Well, I guess Patterson's probably not quite yeah. necessarily in the mix, but I liked what I saw when he when uh, Gibson missed a game late in the fantasy playoffs, and Patterson had a nice nice game for you. Yeah, um, I don't I don't understand this spot at all unless they're planning on moving off of Gibson or. It's what like, they're playing, I, like what are they, like what are they? Brian gonna, Robertson, D, good pass catcher, but so fucking Gibson's an awesome pass catcher. McKissick is an awesome pass catcher. Like I guess you could kind of use them as that bull in a china shop kind of guy, but I mean, yeah, I just don't know. I mean, what do you? How do? You, I don't. I don't really want to bring in too many vets, but what do you think it does to Gibson? I, I I honestly don't know. I mean, is this a move for a year or two down the road, and they're just gonna move off of Gibson? I, I just, it seems their usage of Gibson just seems so odd because he was a wide receiver in college and right. they don't throw him the ball. Right. Or they don't throw him the ball enough, enough I should say. Yeah. And McKissick is the, the, seems to be the, the guy. And yeah. So I just, it again, weird thing. I haven't digested it enough. Immediately I was like, damn, that got to hurt It hurts. Uh, I, think, I, feel like it hurts I feel like it hurts all parties involved. Right. It definitely moves Gibson down. It moves Robinson is a third-round pick at best now. Yeah, which I think some people would have definitely taken a mid-second without blinking an eye. Gibson eh. was already kind of trending. One quarterback. Eh, that's a bit that's a bit rich for my blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gibson was kind of already trending down with the McKissick signing. Yeah. We tried to trade Gibson off of a, of a team we were trying to rebuild, and the guy was like, did you read the news? Like... <laughs> <laughs> they they re-signed McKissick. It's like okay, why are yeah, you tr- going to be? Why do people do that? Why do people try and sell you on their own player? What, sell you on making a deal? Like, because they're the smartest people in the room, and they probably you know if their parents are probably idiots. But I mean, <laughs> like, I you know Gibson is a phenomenal player. The talent is phenomenal. I don't understand. Like you is said, is it the foot? Is there could also be the foot thing right. as well? Do the Redskins know something we don't? Because maybe they, it seemed like he played through something. He at definitely times. played through like some shin, shin break, shin break, turf which, toe, I think, he, or something. Yeah, he, some, like, yeah. He had a shin splint or shin something in the beginning of the year that was like, oh, I don't know. Why don't they just shut him down? They kept forcing him out there, right. yeah. and it's like he, maybe he that's had why they more got catches. Robinson. He had one more catch than he had carry in college, right? Seventy-two total touches or something. Did you know that? Hmm. Um, 
and but then they don't they don't throw it to him very much at all, and, and instead they're just running the dog shit out of him, and it, it doesn't seem like his body's built for that. It was like maybe they could just turn it more into of a third down kind of guy instead of just that one two. Why bring banger. McKissick back then? Yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's why probably bring McKissick back. You had a guy who was banged up. Jarrett Patterson was a nice player, but you got a chance to take another guy who's maybe a little bit closer to to Antonio Gibson what he does on the field because I think he I think Brian Robinson is kind of at some circles probably not known for his pass catching but he was great strong, catching the ball this strong year strong pass catcher um, and, and pretty elusive and strong for, for how yeah. big he is yeah. nothing um, like nothing like twitchy or elite like Gibson but overall very solid a he's very a str- he's a he's, your, he's a 1980s running back yeah yeah so I mean maybe it, maybe it's strictly like hey we know that we're going to play Gibson a decent amount, and we feel good about having a guy like Robinson behind him. We'll give him a couple carries here and there, and maybe it's not a big deal. Yeah, um, but you could get that guy I know, two rounds I later. Know, I know. That's, just, that's I'm not just what we talked about with the Niners. It's the same thing. Like, Especially as the Redskins, like, dude, you got to have some other need. There has yeah. to be another need. You could have went there. So uh, not sure what to make of that. Let's keep it moving. Try to get through a couple more of these guys. Uh, Pierce lands in a great spot. I liked Pierce uh, somewhat. I think the hands... Super underrated, really soft. I think he catches the ball really well. He's got a couple of runs there that I, that I really like. I think pretty underutilized at Florida. And this That's is the same thing. He's going to be a better pro than he was college player. Good, That's really good and, hard for running backs, good isn't and, it? Good in pass. He does a bunch of things that could get you on the field. And now he's in a pretty open spot. Yeah, I mean, he's in a great spot. Marlon he's in, Mack and yeah, him. He, and Rex Burkhead. Right. Like, he's in a great spot. He'll probably, he could be the third running back off the board. And some, I'm not taking him as a third running back. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't take him. Fourth, I mean, in a lot of circumstances, probably at worst. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, I like it. I'll I didn't take, like the player, so I'm probably not going to have him anywhere unless he falls. Yeah, I was. He was when I said mid second in one quarterbacks. It was like you know Brian Robinson and and him and and a couple other guys in there in a lot of one quarterbacks that we were mocking up and and I, got, I had no problem taking Pearson. Now he lands in a spot that I don't hate. So I could I could still see him being kind of that mid second running back in one QB. Are you taking him over uh, the next two guys drafted, which were Zamir White? And I Isaiah would Spiller? absolutely take Zamir White and Isaiah Spiller over him. Yep, I like would, both. Of their, I like both of their talents and abilities. Yes. You might wait a year. Maybe maybe Zamir White never gets the opportunity to be the guy. But well, they, they, they did pick decline up. Josh Jacobs for fifth year, but that doesn't mean anything. He could certainly yeah. be back. Yeah. They could extend him. It could be Zamir White and Josh Jacobs moving forward and everybody, Bolden and Drake and such all go away, and maybe that's the backfield. Um, but I liked Zamir a whole lot, Yep. Um, and I liked Spiller a whole lot. Um, Pierce gets himself probably in a better situation to start, but I like the talent of these other two guys, and the landing spot isn't ne- isn't bad enough or isn't better worse, situation isn't from worse enough to really make me – Flip flop. Yeah, it's, it's only from an opportunity standpoint. For an immediate opportunity better, standpoint. Right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, yeah. So I, I would take Zamir and Spiller for sure over them. I mean, I'm taking Spiller over Rashad White and Brian Robinson and Pierce and and probably even James Cook. And so I'm probably gonna miss James Cook. And then, yeah, I think some of these guys, the, the guys that I have in a tier, probably I'm taking over. Look, guys, I'm looking for. Well, some one of them is immediate, and one of them's for 2023. So Pierre Strong will be the next guy off the board. What what, what is New England doing? Uh, no clue. Like I like I like I. Harris hasn't been bad. Stevenson was okay. Just run the wing T out there. Like, like what? what are they doing here? Just and they took two of them. Right. Like Bill, are you? Do we need to get you and checked out? Harris and Ramondre are both good. Like both yeah. both were yeah, good. I both, mean yeah. Harris will probably be out of there in a year. And they still and then, have White. Like and and yeah. yeah and I mean you did take. Uh, the Kevin Harris from uh, South, South Cacolet. Carolina pretty late, which I know a lot of people liked him. And, and there is in, in 2020 or 2019, he, he's had some outstanding tape. Yeah, led the SEC in rushing in 2020. Some vertebrate back L- issue. A little right? bit of a back issue. So I think maybe yeah. that was kind of just a stab like, hey, maybe we just fucking scooped up the best running back in this draft potentially if he could get right. Um, I know guys like uh, Matt Waldman uh, feel in that vein sort of um, who, are, who are really in-depth kind of guys in breaking down prospects. Um, so it, I think that was maybe a, a little, hey, as a six round, take a shot on this guy. But it, it still is weird that, like, why? Why are you taking Pierre Strong here? Yeah. I mean, he's he's interesting. 
I know J Mike's a big fan of his. I'm sure. He yeah, we had that. Angelo on. He he had him as his RB two. Wow. So I mean, that's got to hurt that a little bit. Well, he um, had him. Well, yeah, he he did say that he wasn't going to take him that high because right. he wouldn't have to. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Uh, if Pierre's did. value gets down, lock shot down far enough that because people are saying they say, "What the fuck are we doing?" and nobody really wants him in, in some drafts. Yeah. Especially maybe not the sharpest draft, maybe home league drafts. I mean, he's a fourth. I mean, he's probably a fourth round pick in some less in some less knowledgeable drafts. Right. So I'll I'll take all of that. Sure. Sure. Why not? Because I already have one of those New England running backs. Probably. Might as well grab another yeah. one. Yeah. I see. Haskins goes to Tennessee. That's Has- an interesting spot. Hassan. Very I, very. Haskins is an interesting running back, and there's nobody there behind Henry, and he's not getting any younger. Right. And and I like I I've. I know nobody really loved Haskins in the process here. It didn't seem, but like what every time I watched Michigan play football, like just seems like he really fits right into Tennessee culture. Yep, like sure does. pretty hard runner. Yep. Like you, you lose, uh, or at least maybe you can even spell Henry with him a little bit. Um, I, I'm interested a little bit. I know that's not probably going to be super popular, but no, I think he's solid in the third round for me. Yes. Yep. Yep. I like the shot. I like the shot. And I, I uh, so Algier goes to Atlanta. People are super fucking pumped up about that. If you liked Algier, um, then then this is this is How for you. How could you not, Algier? Um, I don't dislike him. I don't think it necessarily moves the needle for me all that much. But I mean, not a whole lot of competition. Pretty big back. Runs pretty hard. Pretty physical. I think he's. I could make an argument of him being my RB5. Would you take Zamir or uh, Algier? I think I'm... It's kind of like the Pierce-Zamir thing a little yeah. bit, where it seems like Algier could really find himself with some opportunity. I mean, immediately. Immedi- I mean, he could be the starting running back week one. Right. I mean, CPAT's back, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, but... Which you know? How much longer is that? I don't know. Last? I don't know. I don't know. It was great, and it wasn't like they gave him a ton. No, no, work. and that was the other thing. Good call. I mean, I was, wildly inefficient, right? Or a wildly efficient, efficient wildly yeah. efficient. Yeah, yeah. Efficiency off the charts. I guess I'm probably gonna take Algier. They did sign Cordero Patterson to yeah. a new deal. Spiller or Algier. Spiller. We already. <sighs> well, yeah. That was more for him. Yeah. You guys know where we stand on Spiller. Struggling, huh? Yeah, because I, I don't care about the twenty picks. Yeah, that uh, that's guy that I don't. It's negligible. Mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna take Spiller, but nice. Algier had twenty eight catches last year. Yeah, I'm te- would you look at that? Just look at he, it. He he lucked. He he found him all it's the a good spot for opportunity. I feel like all those kind of like running backs that were like not in the top discussion all landed in not the worst spots outside of Pierre Strong. Yeah, like I don't hate Vegas. I don't hate. Uh, Los Love Angeles Atlanta. Chargers. I like Atlanta. I like Houston. Like those are all pretty good. And then, yeah. I mean, if getting into this next round of guys that, that Algier was in, I mean, even Kyron Williams landing in the Rams is is interesting. He puts him back on the board because I don't know that they have any real true pass catching running right. backs in in LA. Right. I mean, Akers does fine. Henderson does fine. Right. And I mean, Henderson's got to be close to out of there. Right. I mean, I. Hate Daryl Daryl Henderson. So <laughs> you hate Daryl Henderson? Yes, I have hated him for a long time. If you want it, Casey? Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. He's an unrestricted free, free agent, agent after yeah. this year. Yeah. So I mean that. I feel like that's perfect for a guy like uh, Kyron Williams. Yep. You don't even have to play all that much this year necessarily. Maybe and Henderson hasn't been healthy. Um, and I mean. Who knows what's going to happen with Akers? I Akers mean, is off an Achilles. He had that one. He had that one game where he looked good against. Uh, and then it was kind Arizona. of mad. And then yeah. And and the Rams lost Whitworth and uh, another. I think guard. Uh, that, yeah, but Note Boom played. Note Boom played well. Right. Um, so well, we talked about it last year that that line could be something of a concern potentially down the road here because they had a lot of old guys and and uh, they let some guys walk the year before and. Uh, so, but I think I think that's a great landing spot for Kyron Williams. I, 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 you know, that's I know we've said it a million times. You guys, can you take in the third round? But if if Kyron is at, at the end of the third round into the fourth, I'll, I'll I'll scoop him. He he seems like a nice flyer to take. Yeah, for sure. I think he's I think again probably he's pro- guy I'm probably taking in the third round. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know much about Snoop Connor, but it makes me feel real good about ETN. 
uh, that the fifth round back is all you brought in. Yeah. And James Robinson coming off a late Achilles. That is an Achilles. Um, yeah. He must feel good about ET. Right. He must know, he feel good about where he's at with his rehab, where he's at mentally, all that shit. Love yeah. it. Ford goes to Cleveland. A uh, little bit of a log jam there. Uh, maybe if you if you know it's if you have any of the if you have a Kareem a or a Chubb, maybe he's a late round pick for you. I mean, I, I like this time. Ford's got some speed to him. Uh, he he's, was a highly recruited guy at Alabama. Didn't see the field much. Um, and then uh, Ty Chandler, Minnesota, whatever. Well, yeah, kind of mad, but Dalvin's. You know, on the way out, and I don't think Madison's going to resign there. So you know, could there be could be a window there. Yeah. Um, Harris to New England. Talked about that. Beatty to Baltimore. That means for me, that's awesome for J.K. Dobbins. I like Beatty just fine. I think he's pretty good. Don't but. understand how the man ran for sixteen hundred yards last year. <laughs> don't understand it at all. I think he had four games where he rushed over like two hundred yards, and then he had like five other games where he had less than eighty yards. It was it was wild. Yeah. And a good pass catcher. Um, a, m- a million catches. So. You know, he, he gets in there, and, and Gus he isn't going to be... He was the entire offense, though, at Missouri. Right. He was the offense. Gus isn't going to be there, and Justice Hill... Don't care about Justice yeah. Hill. So, I mean, could be okay for a late-round Beatty, but I feel really good about J.K. Dobbins. It was a nice... And, and we looked at the list of veteran free agent running backs, just like David Johnson. There's not Freeman, that many. who was there last Devonta year. Devonta Freeman. Yeah. Uh, Leon Bell. There's yeah, not that many. Sony Michelle's there. He's probably a Sony, guy who yeah. could cause some concern because he did look pretty good last yeah, year. Yeah, he had some spots where he looked, he yeah. looked strong. Yeah. Looked like the Sony that the Patriots drafted in the first round. Right. So they still could bring in one of those guys to try and lower, you know, we put out a two-minute video or something about is it time to be concerned about J.K. Dobbins. It was. Then they didn't bring in Melvin Gordon. They didn't draft anybody of note. And it's like. Melvin goes and ruins Javante for, for another year. back with the. Du- Hurts that, that constituent. Yeah. Uh, and so the last guy here that I know. Uh, Keontae. Angelo. Angelo really liked him. He was pretty high on, on his board. And he. Didn't think he was going to get super high capital. He was hoping that if he got fourth, yep, I was would, would, would fourth maybe well. be a little more exciting. But a nice landing spot here. Great Not a whole lot of competition. Spot. Eno Great. Benjamin's there. Don't care about Eno. And uh, Connor's there. Yeah. Connor was pretty good last season. Connor also not the picture of health consistently. No. no. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't know a ton about Ingram. Um, but as far as landing spot goes and – Excitement! They they're, they seem like they're going all in on offense yeah. over in Arizona. Like, hey, we we might not be great on defense. We lost a pass rusher. Lost, you know, we don't really know. But we're we're gonna try to put up thirty. Uh, so, Keontae could be. Is that his name? Keontae. Yeah. Could Keontae. be. Uh, yeah. I think. Keontae. I would rather have Ingram over Beatty, Harris, Chandler, Kyron, Ford, Connor. Haskins. Probably Haskins. Pierre with it's the landing spot. It's probably close to whoever Pierre. Um, he's probably – I have him ahead of – I don't like Damien Pierce at all. I just don't. Hey, that's okay. You're allowed to not like somebody. I think I have him over <laughs> Pierce. I mean, it depends on why. You'd have him I over I didn't Pierce? like his game. Yep, yep. Okay. Well, yeah. But yep, I have Algier, there Ingram. There wasn't much game I have here. Algier, Ingram, and Zamir all on us here. I, I, I think they're my guys who would think that could be see a huge jump when buying now. Who could be starting running backs in twenty three? I feel like Angelo was about to do Pierce hadn't done him, but he would he would certainly agree with you. And I think I don't think he'd be surprised with the capital. So you know, you mean Ingram? In, well, I'm, I'm saying he didn't have Pierce done. If Pierce was going to be the next guy he was going to do. I think he he was so, tweeting about Ingram on on Saturday. He definitely likes him, Ingram. Say, him saying he's above Pierce. I'm saying that he kind of knew that Ingram Angelo knew that Ingram was going to get low draft capital. I think he would agree with you that. He would probably have him over Pierce uh, as far as somebody that we talked Ingram with. Yeah. Uh, so, and I don't, you know, I don't think the six is alarming. I think that was kind of what you were expecting. I was hoping for, for I was hoping for fourth or fifth, but I mean, he got drafted in a great spot. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe Arizona knew that that's what, that's all it was going to take for him. And yeah. the same thing with in your rookie drafts, if you know, you can get a guy somewhere, why would you take him earlier? Right. I mean, I, why did, I mean, it's funny you say that, but then, you had the Rams talking about that guy that the guard that the Patriots took, that they were scouting him for their pick of 104, and Cole. he got taken 23. It's just, I mean, yeah. it, people's boards are just completely different. Right. And that's why we play this. Right. Yeah, I mean, like you said, 50, even 50% of the first round, 60% of the first round is probably going to be bus. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, 
obviously it goes down from there. Um, and that's why you play the draft capital game. But And that's why there's four rounds of a rookie draft. I think there's there's five all, rounds. It's also something to be said for, hey, I like the landing spot with Ingram. I liked Ingram. Yep. And I'm going to stick to my guns here. I don't, I don't need to take Ingram in the second round. Um, um, I could take him in the late. So I could take him with one of my. With, well, I, I'm, I'm saying I don't think he's going to be going in second. No. So if you wanted to just go ahead and get him and make sure you had him because you like him and, and trade up into the second end of the second. Yeah. Two twelve. Yeah. Three one. Make yep. sure you get your guy. Yeah. Um, and then you know Pierce probably already went. So. Yep. I think in every draft that I'm not in, that I don't have that. Oh, Pierce is going to go before then. He's yeah. going. I think. I think there's a shot that Pierce. Like I said, I think he's he in a lot in I think not consensus, but I think in more drafts than not, he's probably going to be the third running back off the board because people are people. Yeah, like or, or fourth. I think third, fourth. I think I think people like Spiller still too. I think he's a three fourth guy where he's going to go, maybe not at the turn, but in yeah. the early part of the second round, and that's just too rich for my blood. Yeah. All right. Anybody got anything else to add here as we we close up shop? Xander Horvath. That's a great name. Yeah. Chargers picked him up. And uh, Kansas City picked up a guy that I have. I have no idea who that is. Um, And Vegas picked up another guy in the seventh round as well. Who I've never heard of. No. So that concludes our little draft recap and kind of maybe some movers and some shakers early on here. This is, we're early in the process here. Um, things are bound to change. We're on here for you and, and us. Obviously, we're bursting at the seams to talk about it. It's been waiting for a while. Um, so it's exciting and we'll be getting a mock draft together uh, real soon to, to iron more of this out and really see how things uh, come together. We should have Derek Brown on here shortly um, to discuss more of this stuff and see how he feels because it's important to get other people's opinions not just be stuck in your own little world um so appreciate y'all subscribe we got t-shirts at uh revelry brewing company uh and we got the five dollar holler at patreon so plenty of ways to support your boys if you like the show if you're listening on the podcast let me get that five star review on the spotify's and the, the itunes, iTunes. <laughs> appreciate y'all peace